Welcome to the show. Um, my name is Stuart Alsop. This is the show Crazy Wisdom. Uh, my guest here is Ivonne. How do you? Uh, Lavinia. Lavinia. Lavinia yeah. Ionota. Ion Ionita. Ionita. Yeah. Uh, welcome no to the problem. show. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, can you introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me, first of all. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Lavinia Ionita. I am a medical doctor. Um, I am uh, doing, I'm a general practitioner, but, uh, well, I, I'm dealing mostly with functional medicine and I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying to do personalized medicine as much as it's possible um, nowadays in, in, uh, in the clinical practice. And I am also an entrepreneur. Um, uh, my my startup it's called Akesio, uh, and it's built um, around the, um, we want to solve stress mm -hmm. <laughs> management and well solve it's a it's a big word but we want to help people to better understand their stress uh, and uh, to help them to uh, deal better with the negative side of stress. Uh, yeah, before we were speaking, you were talking about essentially that stress is this amorphous concept for most people. It's a huge nebulous concept. And uh, it's, it's really important that each person define stress for themselves. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Why, how, how, why is it so important that people kind of figure out their own definition of stress rather than yeah. kind of take this um, yeah. other definition? Yeah, the, the, the most known definition of stress that maybe many people uh, are aware of, it's the fight or flight reaction. So uh, in order to save our lives. So mm -hmm. it, it's the, the body, our bodies are built in this way to fight a, a dangerous situation um, in order to, to su survive. Mm. Uh, so this is the it's a very a very broad uh, explanation. Uh, of course, uh, nowadays we we don't have uh, uh, every day these um, life-threatening situations, but uh, we put in we use the same mechanism as we we would be in um, uh, a very big danger in a life danger. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, it's it's important to understand this basic, very basic uh, concept, uh, and uh, everyone should interpret this um, uh, based on um, uh, his own personality, his life context, uh, and um, the, the perception of stress. It's 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 really it's it's important, but it's not everything. So the definition of stress, I'm I'm not even sure that it matters after all um, uh, it's it it matters what uh, what it means for uh, every uh, every one of us and how do we live this uh, daily stress well and essentially what you guys are doing in your company is you are you're creating biomarkers um, or you're testing biomarkers and for our listeners testing testing we are not creating <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah. So, so for our listeners, a biomarker is essentially some sort of a signature in your body that tells, that gives you a snapshot in time of what, of what's going on in your body at that given moment. And can yeah. you talk about what you guys are testing for in terms of stress? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, as I said, the the stress it's um, it's a very it's a very complex process, and uh, uh, it involves several molecules, uh, hormones, uh, neurotransmitters, peptides, and and so on. So we are uh, testing the cortisol, uh, some some hormones, cortisol DHEA, which are hormones uh, secreted by adrenals, and uh, cortisol, by the way, is the uh, main stress hormones, but we are also testing some neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, uh, and so on, which are equally involved in, in the stress uh, process. So we try to have this broad view of, uh, of the stress and um, it's, it's not only the biological uh, test that uh, our recommendations will not be based exclusively on the biological test, we will cross this data uh, with um, uh, data from a very detailed health questionnaire and also uh, information that we, uh, we will collect it, uh, during a, a consultation, a video consultation. Mm. So we try to have this uh, 
whole picture. We try to look to the biology, to the uh, symptoms, perception of stress, because there's, um, yeah, many people are, are aware of, about the uh, perception of stress. How do they feel uh, um, about a stress, if they feel stress or not? Anyway, they are questionable about, uh, about that. But um, uh, there is a different um, uh, answer on um, bio, the biology doesn't necessarily follow this perception of stress. This is why mm -hmm. uh, the, the looking uh, to some hormones and molecule, uh, it's really important to have this, uh, uh, this idea about the um, stress level of, of someone. And does it does uh, do you take it at several points throughout throughout a month or is it a one time thing? Well, so um, the the first step is the the, the present package. It's uh, one time, mm -hmm. but it's one time during a day, one uh, one data point during a day. But during this day, uh, we will uh, collect. Um, several uh, samples because we want to see the cortisol rhythm, mm. the uh, mm. secretion of cortisol. Uh, it's, it's really important. Uh, and then a uh, few months after, if, uh, if the person wants to recheck or if uh, they need to recheck, so then uh, we, will, uh, we will recheck that. But the, um, uh, the package includes only one test. Mm. Uh, which is made, uh, which is done one uh, during one day. Yep, and the the the, the package itself um, that includes the the consultation with the doctor and everything like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the test, the consultation with the doctor, and uh, also the recommendations and uh, uh, the the follow up, which is well, it's it's a um, basic follow up. We want to uh, be sure that the person will. Uh, acquire will be able to apply the recommendation they, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we will have for for them that's really interesting and for those of my listeners why i'm so interested in this topic is because i've been in mexico trying to figure this out for my own health for the last month okay because in america testing non-insurance mandated testing is very expensive so if you're not in, in immediate health issues or you don't have very good insurance uh, yeah. And the things you're talking about would cost quite a bit of money. So I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go to Mexico and figure it out on my own. Uh, but then the problem I ran into is I don't know what biomarkers to test for. And so I was like calling the doctors like, well, what, you know, what should I test? And, and they all, yeah. you know, so, uh, so it's, it's, so I'm really interested because I want to, I want to be a customer. Of, of Yeah, I will be, I'll be happy to have you a customer and to, to help you with, with the stress, uh, uh, management. <laughs> yep. And, and what is your thought on alternative methods of stress management? For example, yoga, uh, uh, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, all, all these things that are complementary or alternative medicines. Uh, well, it, it depends what, um, what we understand by um, Chinese. Uh, it, is, uh, it is mostly, I don't know, phytotherapy or acupuncture or um, uh, meditation because um, I, I believe they can help. Of course, mm -hmm. there is, again, no um, uh, universal uh, treatment for everyone, but what we know so far and what is... Uh, very well proven is that meditation helps a lot uh, and even a few days of meditation um, uh, no matter if we are a beginner and we are doing uh, uh, we are meditating pretty pretty poorly mm. uh, however it helps um, there are some plants regarding well phytotherapy uh, I'm, I'm not uh, good in Chinese uh, medicine plants but I know there are some adaptogens uh, which are not only part of the Chinese medicine which are um, uh, that are regulating pretty well the cortisol secretion so these plant adaptogen plants mm. are for example uh, rhodiola licorice uh, uh, siberian ginseng and, and so on reishi uh, um, and so you you mentioned you're in functional medicine um, i've been researching functional medicine because i was in mexico trying to figure this out and it seems like the functional medicine people are the only ones kind of 
talking about this, but at the same time, there's a lot of people calling functional medicine somewhat of a scan. And for our listeners, functional medicine is basically, actually, can you explain functional medicine? Um, uh, yeah, well, what I, I think one of the problems that we have today in, 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 in medicine uh, uh, is that we, in my opinion, we didn't have yet have a um, happy term for a, a global approach. Yeah. Uh, we mm. can call it functional medicine, personalized medicine, um, um, preventative medicine. Um, so in, in my view, I cannot say I am doing a functional mm. medicine, purely functional medicine. Mm. Uh, I, I can say that I am doing a f adapted functional medicine uh, <laughs> because I am interested in, in several fundamental pillars. So we try to understand the root causes of a disease or of, of symptoms. So we try to um, uh, treat, uh, we try to, to see the, uh, the whole picture of the person. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is the, um, th this is the, the big principle. Uh -huh. Personalized medicine, uh, I will be happy to use uh, uh, this term. I'm a little bit cautious yet because from one side, people are not here yet too familiar with that. Uh, and on the other side, personalized medicine, uh, it's still uh, mostly used for cancer therapy or in oncology area because it started there because mm -hmm. it's the most urgent area where uh, we need to personalize, mm. Mm. Um, I mean, personalize at very high level uh, because we, we are supposed to, to provide a personalized medicine to, to everyone. Mm. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, what I like to say is that I, I, I like to personalize a health program, a treatment as much as it possible with what we have today available, what scientifically it's possible today. What is something that a lot of people think is possible, but is not yet possible, te technically speaking, or scientifically speaking? Um, hmm. um, in terms of personalized medicine, I think... Um, Genomics are, um, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, advancement in, in genomics area and in omics area. Uh, and, uh, well, I am <laughs> really passionate about that. Uh, it's, it, there are a lot of uh, possibility to apply this in clinical practice. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think um, there is a paradox. Uh, we we know, all know uh, a lot of companies who are providing uh, a genetic tests, and um, this is they are seeing that we can take action from from that. In in the same time, uh, we are discovering every day more and more things, and we realize, oh, actually, we don't know so much. Uh, so I think it is. I really believe that uh, genomics will be part of uh, um, our routine practice in a few years. Uh, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to, to have that. Uh, but now it's, it's a little bit, um, uh, we, we, have to, uh, we have to pass this uh, transition time where uh, there are not too many people who are doing the test. There are not too many companies who are doing uh, good quality of tests. Um, the academia doesn't uh, mm -hmm. work enough, in my opinion, with industry and with doctors. So mm -hmm. everyone, uh, the things are still too much um, uh, compartmented. Silo. There's a, the, yeah, there's a silos. The information is not shared. Yeah, as, yeah, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of information, but it's we need to we need to make more sense of this information. This is the most interesting thing that I found from talking with Serge Fagat, who I haven't published this interview yet, but uh, he is a biohacker, a Russian entrepreneur who made a lot of money and is basically able to afford uh, all the testing that we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and then plus individualized personalized medicine. So he went to a bunch of doctors and, and, they, and he tested them to see whether he knew whether they thought the same way he did about health. Uh, and then he started uh, um, asking them, based on my test, what should I do in my life? What should I take testosterone? Should I not do this? 
And so, and I asked him, what is the most expensive part of this process? Was it the testing or was it the uh, doctors? And he said, by far, it's the doctors because what you're paying for is somebody who else who's lived exclusively for the last 10 to 15 years or more and thought about these issues and can actually give you, can go through the data research, pick out what's important and then tell you what that means for your life. Um, yeah, and, and speaking about that, well, speaking about genomics, what we know even less, it's um, epigenomics or epigenetics, the environment, because we we can know, okay, this is our, uh, uh, this are our genes, but we don't know yet how those genes will be expressed in our mm. environment. Mm. And um, I think it, it's, uh, it, it's a extraordinary extraordinary area i mean in research in academia of course we do have available um, uh, epigenetic tests but they are far uh, too expensive uh, mm. they are <laughs> maybe how much, how much are those right now i don't know recently the cost but let's say the, i think they are something between uh, 10000 and 15 15000 uh -huh. uh, dollars something like that uh -huh. uh, and uh, i think the cost it's it's a high barrier but um, uh, I, I think that we also miss uh, a lot of um, uh, lifestyle data a lot of longitudinal data uh, we might have a lot of data uh, um, uh, separate data sets from, uh, let's say, genomics, from uh, lifestyle, from microbiome, uh, but we we don't have a lot of data sets for the same individuals um, in time. So mm. uh, when we we do have some some cohort like that, but uh, um, what you're talking I, I, what you're talking about basically it would be it would be someone who is interested in how their genes get expressed in their environment and then has to take multiple ten to $15,000 tests over a year or something like that in order to see well, how it it's, works, right? it's uh, basically it's impossible to, to do that. I mean, the cost, uh, yeah. unless if someone pay for them, yeah. uh, but we cannot afford that or <laughs> unless if the labs will say, okay, we will offer you this, those tests and we, uh, we will understand um, a, lot, uh, a lot more about your, uh, your biology. And uh, well, there are several projects who uh, who will do that um, uh, in US um, uh, the, the precision medicine program mm. um, uh, which well they, they will look not only to, to genomics but they, they will uh, also look to other data sets uh, but um, I think this is um, a huge point that we are missing right now uh, to collect uh, good quality of data and uh, longitudinal data sets from the same individuals uh, and in able to do that we uh, we need to invest in uh, in this kind of project because an individual will uh, well, it will be very difficult to do this by itself. And even, let's say, uh, you are a billionaire and you, you will do that. I'm not even sure that, uh, um, I mean, we need populational studies. We need, to, we will understand this on individual levels, but also um, at, the, at the populational uh, mm. level. So, um yeah, we definitely need more more data, and we'll need to make sense of this data uh, in a, in a, in a better way. This is so interesting, and I really love talking about the overarching science behind what what we're talking about. But I do I am interested in your own personal journey as as you've created yeah. this 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 project. Um, as as you know, like entrepreneurs face a lot of stress themselves. So I'd like to talk yeah. more about how it's shown up in your own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, so the idea, um, uh, the idea of uh, uh, doing a uh, project uh, around the around the stress uh, started with the question: What is the most common uh, problem that I am seeing in my practice in several years? And uh, I realized that, well, I said people come from for fatigue, for sleep problems, uh, difficulties to lose weight. Uh, so several symptoms that actually I realized um, that, uh, well, the a root cause, a, 
a very um, a big root cause can be stress. Of course, it's not only that, but uh, um, I, I realized that if I manage to help more people to um, better uh, deal with stre stress, and first of all, to better understand their stress, uh, then, uh, well, I... I, I, I will be, I'll be happy to, to participate in that. And uh, I think it's, it's part of my... Uh, and not, and not, you said something really interesting before we started. That you're not only helping people with stress. What you're trying to do is essentially you've, you've, you can help personally one-on-one, -on -one, maybe 1,000 people at most, maybe 10,000 people in your own per personal practice, right? But yeah, what you're trying to do is like scale... Um, exactly exactly yeah. yeah yeah this was another problem because i realized okay i will uh, um what i want uh, well it's it sounds a little bit crazy but i really want to help millions of people and i uh, i i would like to do this in in the better way that i i can do uh, and um um, yeah, otherwise, like I said, I would be uh, comfortable in, in a private practice and don't, uh, uh, yeah, saying I, I do whatever I can in my practice. But I, I really think that if, um, um, if we try to look a little bit further and imagine, okay, we can have an impact uh, um, on million uh, million lives, um, then, well, it's, mm. uh, it, it's, it's satisfying. <laughs> I've got to go back to the science and the testing. So what, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> cause it's so interesting. So you, 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 we've got this phenomenon where people are starting to be interested in their own health. They're going to start testing and they're going to start seeing doctors. The price of doctors, because it's a human human interaction will probably stay the same for a long time. Will the price of testing decrease over time? Will what? Sorry, the, I lost you for price, a second. The price of testing. So me going in, testing, or me having something in my body yeah. that tests. What is the next five to ten years in that in that world? Yeah, I, I do. I do believe that people that, that the labs will um, will will really. Um, have to decrease their uh, their prices mm -hmm. uh, now it's um, you know it's a little bit uh, uh, tensioned in the way they they are saying and it's not only one life generally because I, I I know them pretty well I mean speaking of flaps in general they they are uh, generally they have this uh, this uh, speech when you have thousand people we will lower uh, the prices <laughs> guys i i would need now to have lower prices <laughs> to have faster thousand people yeah. but uh, i understand they are cautious they uh, they don't uh, they don't have this uh, vision to uh, touch uh, many many people as possible uh, but i think uh, well the the technology will uh, anyway change a lot of things we will have more and more home tests uh, we will have more and more even not only home tests but devices to test yourself uh, uh, hormones like and mm -hmm. other molecules and I'm looking for by the way to have uh, um, even more than devices to have sensors so mm -hmm. uh, collecting data and uh, have almost real time uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, information mm. uh, in well it's it's not uh, it's not for everyone and not for all the time but it will be really interesting uh, so yes I do think that lab they uh, they will realize that they have to they have to move forward the biggest problem that I see with all the stuff we're talking about and all my own research in functional medicine and I'm already seeing starting to see it in some of the people writing about functional medicine is that when people are in pain, they look for answers. Um, mm -hmm. And Western med medical system has a way of providing people with answers that sound good, sound like they're, for example, I go into a physical therapist, I have shoulder pain. Uh, that shoulder pain might be related to something in my shoulder, but pain is not an accurate representator of tissue damage. So many doctors will tell me, oh, you have a torn rotator cuff. And then they take the imaging, the medical imaging, and they show the, the torn ro rotator, rotator cuff. 
But then we found out over the last 15 to 20 years that medical imaging also is not uh, a, a good indicator of, of tissue damage. Uh, because if you take 20 people off the street, 100 people off the street, 1,000 people off the street, yeah, 50% of them will have damage to the rotator cuff, damage to the rotator yeah. cuff, 50% won't. But the ones with damage won't have any more pain than the ones without. So pain is a con complex thing. Stress is also a complex thing. The issue is that I see is a bunch of people who are going to make a lot of money off of saying, hey, you've got this, this test. I've got this test. Uh, this will prove this and then basically yeah. sell snake oil under this guise of, of oh, I'm, I'm a doctor and everything like that. How do you see us getting around this problem or, or helping people to understand that this is a problem? Yeah, I think the um, educational side is really important mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I really don't want to make uh, promises that uh, we cannot take. So mm -hmm. this is, it, it's really fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think as a doctor, we can never say I'm, I know everything. Uh, and 100% I will solve your problem mm -hmm. uh, because it will, I don't believe in that. And I, I think we need to stay humble. We, we know a lot of things, but we still don't know many, many things. And I think what is matter the most is to be able to say uh, we, are, we, we know that so far we are, we, the science it's, mm. it's here and but um, we will adapt as soon if we tomorrow uh, we, we give you this, if we today we give you this recommendation, but tomorrow uh, it will be a huge discovery. So I will be able to come back to you and say, oh, actually uh, we need to uh, adapt a little bit uh, because what I uh, told you yesterday now it's, uh, it's not, um, mm. uh, we need to adapt that. So we need to stay uh, honest and we need to explain people that uh, medicine and science it's it's complex yeah. and complicated without of course get them even more anxious <laughs> than yeah. they, they were before I mean um, it's because otherwise we will not do nothing we'll say okay no we cannot solve anything so uh, it's uh, it's the balance between uh, being very transparent and saying it's what we are know today and where the it's what we can do for you today and uh, we we are here to help you and to understand um yeah to help you at best this, i think you gave a great answer in there and that is essentially what i what i heard was that for any of our listeners if you have an issue um and you go to somebody and they have all the answers and no doubt run away um, because <laughs> unless, unless you have a, unless you have a, a different way of saying it. Well, it's, it's, I'm not saying that, uh, I don't know, you have, a, uh, you have, an, you have a very, uh, very clear medical situation and a very, uh, very mm -hmm. clear protocol. Well, I don't like my, much, too much the, the word protocol, but sometimes can be very, very easy. Yeah. Uh, but if we, we, if we are really honest, uh, we always must say, okay, this is what should work. This is what we know. Uh, maybe, yes. Yeah, we will see how it works for you. Yeah. Um, it's overconfidence. I think it's, it's never good yeah. uh, because you, you never know. Maybe you are allergic with uh, something that I would give you and you are not aware of. And uh, I was so confident. I told you that I, uh, 100% I, 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 I will solve your problem. Uh, so I think that the, establishing a, a relationship of trust with, with the patient and be um, create uh, this uh, dynamic relationship uh, it's it's very important mm -hmm. um, yeah That's so compared to, to the fact saying I know everything and you know it's it's the <laughs> the paternalistic attitude mm -hmm. that we we want to get off uh, yeah. speaking about uh, yeah. laughter so <laughs> It, it's more of a partnership. So we, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot mm -hmm. of knowledge, but we have to admit that you have a lot of knowledge too. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, uh, 
let's let's talk about that. Mm. We and that's that's another might know a little bit more about you point of uh, <laughs> uh, speaking about chemistry yeah. or, or biology, but uh, um, you might know more and definitely you know more about your body and your symptoms and we learn uh, a lot uh, we are learning a lot together mm -hmm. so then another piece of actionable uh, advice to somebody is to take their education and their um, knowledge on their own hands and don't just kind of accept what someone else tells you as fact so go to a doctor hear what they say but but then and it can also be taken too far but but mm, go for it. Mm -hmm. it. It should be a conversation because um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's not good either to say, okay, I will go on internet. I will, uh, uh, I, I, I listen to the doctor, but I also, uh, I'm going on internet and the, the other guys are more convincing yeah. and uh -huh. maybe may less scientific, but what, they, they are, um, better in marketing yep. uh, so I will be I have uh, um, uh, I will forget completely what the doctor said and I will uh, trust this guy which are uh, very good uh, very good uh, orators and speakers <laughs> uh, so again uh, I think when you, um, you you listen to what the doctor explains you and you have to ask questions of course there are uh, uh, a lot of um, medical databases that we we can have a look in the medical articles and so on uh, and i think the first question will be to ask the doctors do you have more uh, articles or um, uh, sources resources about about this topic and other you can uh, after you can of course do do your own uh, own research but it should be a, it should be a conversation and I think you you just know when you when you build a trustable relationship mm -hmm. um, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, eventually you ask other doctors you ask a second opinion uh, you ask other people patients or people who had this problem so you go um, on forums who uh, and you will find discussions regard uh, regarding uh, a specific condition so um, yeah I will be I will balance again the, mm -hmm. I will not take for for the ground 100% what a doctor said yeah. uh, uh, I mean, ask questions in the same time uh, you don't have to uh, ignore what <laughs> the doctor said mm -hmm. and then the trust other unreliable sources that might be more convincing that the uh, doctors mm -hmm. maybe uh, wasn't enough um, uh, good in in, so, uh, in the explanation, yeah. but ask questions. I think mm -hmm. this is uh, the advice that uh, I would uh, I would like to have if I would be a uh, a patient. Okay, uh, so many more questions, but I'm going to uh, bring it back to you. And what 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 has been the most the biggest obstacle you faced in creating what you're creating right now? Um. Well, it's only the beginning of <laughs> obstacles. Um, I'm, I think the the, um, the biggest obstacle so far is the, um, the it's the, the trust of uh, other doctors or community. Uh, they are saying, well, why, why do we, why, 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 what do you, uh, why do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I wouldn't say that it's an ob obstacle. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, um, it's just annoying or it's annoying or. No, no, yeah. maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's not a good example that I gave. No, no, that's a, it's a, it's a very interesting thing because so particularly for people, entrepreneurs who have a vision of something that they want to create, most people are not on board because they have a completely different worldview and because it takes about 20 years for, um, for evidence to seep into the medical practical practicing community. Is that right? 
Is that a, um, I've, I've... Yeah, yeah. And actually, it's, it's bridging the two worlds because, mm -hmm. uh, well, generally, when, when you are a doctor and you want to start an entrepreneurial adventure, uh, you kind of have uh, uh, the foot in, in the two worlds. So you, you still want to, to have um, so, um, your own practice or whatever it's your work and uh, also uh, having parallel the, um, your, your entrepreneurial adventure. Uh, and um, it's, it's a hard work, <laughs> but I'm not personally, I'm not complaining of, of mm -hmm. that because I, I love it so much that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, it's uh, every day so exciting and uh, the feeling that uh, uh, I... I'm going to help more and more people. It's, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say the, the, the biggest obstacle um, is the, um, it's to bridge the, this, these two words and to uh, handle the, the mindset uh, of uh, people around who don't necessarily understand uh, why you are doing that, what uh, this implies, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we will see. <laughs> mm -hmm. And are you working with anyone else or are you doing this on your own? Uh, so we are, so far we are uh, well, three, three person in the, in the team, mm -hmm. An another doctor and a technical person. Okay, cool. Um, and so how you, you came to Stanford, you came and studied at Stanford in, in Silicon Valley, right? Um, no, I didn't came there. I, mm -hmm. I made, um, um, online, um, online degree courses for one uh -huh. year. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. In genetics. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. And, um, so what is, I don't know, what is the biggest point of kind of how can people, uh, I don't know. Well, okay, let's go there. How, many, how can people find more about what you're offering? On the website. Uh, how, can <laughs> you spell all? it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, akizio.com. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm uh, really happy to talk to people. Uh -huh. So I encourage people, okay, you, you come on the website. Um, I will put more and more, uh, we'll put more and more information. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I will be happy to, to have a call. Uh, because it's it's important to to, to see to, to discuss. I, will, I I really want to make time for uh, uh, for that to to have a conversation. So mm -hmm. I I invite you to contact me. <laughs> okay. And how can people find you? Uh, Lavinia at mm -hmm. akizio.com. Okay. <laughs> and on the website, if they if you go on the website, you. You, you can contact me very easily. But you're also on Twitter, right, too? Uh, yes, uh, uh -huh. I'm not very active lately. But <laughs> <laughs> and also I have another website, drionita.com. But it's, I'm sure it's, uh, it's easy to find me. So we've got about five minutes left. I asked this yeah. to most of my guests. Um, is there something that you have read or something you have heard or a book that you've come across that's really helped you in your own life deal with the stress of creating something new or is there? Um, regarding stress, um, a book regarding particularly stress, uh, I don't have, um, I don't think that I have a one, one book or one, uh, um, one specific things who, who helped me, I would say several small thing, mm. uh, things. Um, I'm in love with Palm application, the meditation uh -huh. uh, app. Uh, and uh, well, the, I, I, I really enjoy um, um, spending time with my... Uh, little family and <laughs> doing sports so uh it's huh. yeah one um one book but it's not about the stress but it's, it's a book about confidence mm. uh i think helped me with uh, overcoming uh, some um, um yeah 
what some was the main what was the related uh, problem uh, it's written by um, by two journal journalists um, one American and one British I think uh, confidence code I would say mm. okay I, I will confidence I will code. send you the the reference perfect um, and what was the main takeaway from that book what was the main thing that you learned from that book about confidence uh, the main takeaway it was the fact that um, um, confidence it's a it's a thing that we build mm -hmm. uh, even mm -hmm. if we have uh, all different personalities but there is no such a person who have all the time a super high confidence and uh, we need to accept that and we need to remember that uh, we can do whatever we want and uh, even if uh, we have some um, uh, some days or moments where, where we are doubting a lot and uh, yeah it's um, it, mm. it was it was a, a really pleasant book for uh, um, yeah especially mm. for women but mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it seems like it comes back to this idea of a growth mindset for people who don't know what that is is a mindset that um, sees every opportunity as an opportunity for growth as opposed to, and also that we are not static human beings. A lot of science used to say, a lot of neuroscience used to say that what we are given at birth stays with us throughout our whole life and is cha unchangeable after, after, um, after we're young. But then we find out, oh no, there's neuroplasticity that exactly very, very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we were thinking many, many years that we we are not developing new neurons after, uh, at the adult age, so it's uh, it's not true anymore. So, yeah. And so this uh, we, idea that 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 we are fixed human beings with fixed attributes is is not true, and and that if you take this growth mindset. It will, and it, it's it's. There's a lot of evidence. Uh, the, I think the power of habit talks a lot about it. Um, you might yeah. know more, but uh, essentially that the the um, uh, that w if you take on this mindset of a growth mindset, it actually leads to real benefits in your life. Um, yeah, exactly. And speaking about that, uh, even the the personalities, we we all have different. Um, um, aspects we uh, of our personalities uh, so even if we we can say okay we are mostly introverted or extroverted uh, it's uh, we are all evolving and we can be uh, introverted in in one situation and become extroverted in other situations so um, yeah the idea of um, uh, dynamic and um, uh, evolving, there is an evolving process. I think we, we should keep this in mind. And uh, um, if it happens that we are not feeling at our uh, highest level of well-being or um, health, we, we need to remember that, that we can change that. And mm -hmm. we can change uh, what we know. So we need to understand more what, what is happening with us at several levels and uh, uh, we can we can change uh, uh, things that in, in the best way so we, and finally we we evolve this I think it's what we all want to to progress and to evolve mm. so interesting I have so many more questions but I think this is a I think it's enough for one one episode we'll, we'll have you back on the show later um, okay yeah, thank you so much. This has been really great. Uh, people can find you at uh, on your website, Acasio, A-K-E-S-I-O dot com. Yes. Right. Great. And uh, thank yeah, you. I'm, I'll share my own. I'm interested in doing this this testing of myself, so I'll share my own. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of, uh, kind of uh, okay. findings on it. Yeah. Great. <laughs>